Welcome everyone. Today I'm talking about an epic clash in the open source world, VLC versus MPV. In the field of media players, open source solutions have always been vastly superior to any proprietary alternative. VLC is the undisputed king with millions of installations and a widespread presence on Linux, macOS, and Windows. MPV, on the other hand, is a more underground project, but in recent years it's been winning over more and more users, especially on Linux, and it's starting to get noticed on other platforms too. On one side we have VLC, a universal icon, recognizable by its famous orange cone. On the other MPV, a minimalist but extremely powerful player that's challenging the dominance of its historic rival. So I really want to make a comparison of the features and use cases and see what they have in common, what differentiates them, and where there are areas of excellence in specific fields. Let's start with the interface, because this is where two completely opposite philosophies emerge. VLC welcomes you with a complete graphical interface from the first launch. Everything is right there in front of you. Play, pause, stop, volume, playlist. Everything visible, everything accessible with a click. It's the all-inclusive approach, designed for the average user who simply wants to open a video and watch it without complications. MPV, instead, is the exact opposite. When you open it for the first time, you'll find yourself facing just a black screen with the video in the center. No buttons, no toolbars. Controls only appear when you move the mouse and disappear right away. It's a minimalist philosophy designed for those who want maximum screen space and prefer to manage everything from the keyboard. MPV is for purists, for those who love having total control. VLC's interface has remained practically unchanged for decades, and today that shows. It's functional, sure, but it conveys a sense of heaviness, of old school. MPV instead embodies modern trends, sleekness, lightness, fluidity. Its concept of leaving as much space as possible for content is simply genius. It offers a complete and totally configurable suite of controls without ever weighing down the experience. Managing to combine simplicity and complexity at the same time isn't easy, yet MPV pulls it off, a true masterpiece of balance. VLC is configured through menus and dialog boxes. Want to change something? Go into preferences and find hundreds of options organized into categories. You can even customize the appearance with skins, although most people keep the classic interface with the orange cone. MPV instead is configured by editing text files. You need to create a file called mpv.conf and write your settings in it. Does it sound complicated? It is at first. But once you understand how it works, you have incredible control over every single aspect of the player. You can create different profiles for different types of content, associate any key with any function, and even write scripts in Lua or JavaScript to add custom functionality. Here we're really dealing with two different concepts. There's no better or worse. Now let's move on to the technical differences, because this is where things get interesting. VLC is based on the libvlc library and has a fundamental characteristic. It includes all codecs internally. This means it doesn't depend on the operating system to decode videos. It's a huge advantage for compatibility but it also means higher resource consumption. MPV instead was born as a fork of mPlayer and has been completely rewritten over the years. It relies on FFmpeg for video decoding and this allows it to be much more efficient. Hardware acceleration on MPV is superior with excellent support for VOPI on Linux, VDU, and D3D11 on Windows. In terms of RAM consumption, MPV can use up to 50% less than VLC, especially with high resolution content. If you need to play 4K or even 8K videos, MPV handles high frame rates better and maintains smoother playback even on not-so-recent hardware. And here's where MPV really shines. Video quality. MPV offers superior scaling algorithms. When you resize a video, MPV can use algorithms like Ewa Lantos or Spline that produce much sharper and more detailed results compared to VLC's standard scaling. MPV also supports motion interpolation that technology that interpolates frames to create smoother movements. Additionally, color management is more precise, dithering and debanding are better, and HDR support is more mature and configurable. VLC isn't bad for video quality, to be clear. For standard viewing, without particular tweaking, it does its job admirably. But if you're a videophile, if you care about every detail of the image, MPV will give you that extra edge. 
Now let's talk about features. And here VLC shows why it's considered the Swiss Army knife of media players. VLC isn't just a video player, it's much more. You can stream IPTV content, capture the desktop, record from webcam. It has an integrated transcoder that lets you convert videos from one format to another directly from the interface. Playlists are advanced and well-managed. There's a 10-band audio equalizer for those who want to modify the sound. You can apply video effects in real time, rotate, crop, apply filters. VLC can also record streams while you watch them, a very convenient feature. Support for physical media is excellent, CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. VLC handles them all without problems. And then there's subtitle management with integrated automatic search and download. You can even cast to Chromecast. A little known but very useful feature, VLC can repair corrupted video files, or at least attempt to play them even if they're damaged. It supports hundreds of different streaming protocols. It's truly the universal tool. MPV instead focuses on configurable power. Its real strength is in scripting. You can write scripts in Lua or JavaScript to add any functionality you can think of. The community has created hundreds of scripts, thumbnails in the seek bar, automatic opening skip, synchronization with online services, and much more. You can also use custom shaders written in GLSL to modify video rendering. It's expert level stuff, but the possibilities are endless. MPV has an IPC API that allows other programs to control it, so it can be integrated into complex workflows. Support for ASS format subtitles is superior with more faithful rendering of complex styles, and there's integration with YouTube DL and YTDLP, which lets you play videos from YouTube and hundreds of other sites directly by pasting the URL. Let's do a direct comparison. Ease of use? Here VLC wins hands down, five stars versus two. You open it and it works, period. Performance? Absolute dominance by MPV. It's faster, more efficient, and consumes fewer resources. Video quality? MPV again, thanks to its advanced rendering algorithms and superior color management. Integrated functions, here VLC comes back ahead with its arsenal of tools for every need. Streaming, conversion, recording, subtitles, filters, and much more. Customization, MPV to the nth degree. If you're willing to learn, you can transform it into whatever you want. The learning curve is low for VLC, high for MPV. And this is the key difference when deciding which to use. VLC is a concentration of compatibility, functions, and simplicity. MPV is modularity, power, flexibility, and elegance. So, when should you use one or the other? VLC is perfect if you want immediate simplicity, if you need to stream or convert files, if you often work with physical media, or if you simply want a player that works without having to read documentation. MPV is the right choice if you're looking for the best possible video quality, if you have limited hardware and want the best performance, if you love customizing every aspect of the software, or if you want to integrate the player into automated workflows. For casual users, VLC remains the most sensible choice. For enthusiasts, video files, power users, MPV offers possibilities that VLC can't match. In the end, there's no absolute winner in this battle. VLC and MPV represent two different philosophies, designed for different users. VLC is the reliable friend that does everything you ask without asking questions. MPV instead is the precision tool that in the right hands becomes unbeatable. The beauty of open source is precisely this, having choice. You can try them both, they're free. Maybe you'll discover that VLC is perfect for you, or maybe you'll become passionate about the freedom and flexibility of MPV. But the reality, if we want to be honest, is a bit different. 20 years ago, VLC was the undisputed king, the first thing you installed after the browser. Today, however, it has lost part of its charm. Its interface has remained heavy, dated, and over time, many other players, like Dragon Player, Totem, and others, have eroded its user base, at least in the Linux world. MPV, on the contrary, represents what VLC has never managed to become. Software capable of evolving, of streamlining itself, of being at the same time modular, flexible, elegant, and powerful. I myself use it with enormous pleasure and by now I have a hard time doing without it. But I don't deny that VLC remains an extraordinary tool, rich in features and still unbeatable in certain areas. In the end, there's no need to choose a winner. You just need to understand which of the two better reflects your way of experiencing technology.